Why am I a prepper stacker? And why do I think you need to start prepping with gold and silver right now? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Yeah. I'm in front of the video this time, not just my hands, you gotta see a little bit more of me. Not my face, that's not gonna happen, at least not yet. <laughs> in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why I am a prepper stacker. And if you're new to my channel, you might wanna hit that subscribe button you're seeing on the screen right now because this is gonna be a two-parter. You're not gonna wanna miss the second half. I'm gonna get into some really practical advice around what I stack and why I stack it because I'm getting a lot of questions either through comments or direct email people hitting me up on my Instagram they say Yankee what do you stack why do you stack it uh, are you gonna sell it how are you gonna sell your precious metals uh, what about things like uh, scratches or uh, milk spots what about that awful tarnish you hate Yankee, what the heck are you doing touching your bullion without gloves? Are you nuts? And most recently, wait a minute, Yankee, you don't like silver bars? What is your problem? <laughs> well, you know, I want to answer them for you. And I wanted to do it in a very special place because this right here is where I did my second casting call with the Hollywood production company that has kind of been interested in Yankee doing a television program. Um, I did the second casting call in front of a lot of these preps. This is food. I have some other stuff. I have other preps that I store. This is just a small amount, but it's interesting. They wanted to hear about this and uh, well, that's not what this video is about. However, I am a prepper stacker. And I know that conjures up all sorts of wild ideas like uh, the apocalypse, the end of days, uh, you know, Mad Max, zombies, bunkers, whatever. <laughs> I am not all that. And I think that's a bunch of baloney, but I do prep. And I am a prepper stacker. And there's some fundamental differences between what a prepper stacker is and some other types of stackers. I'm going to get into that too. But again, I don't want to bore you. So I was concerned about the length of this video. And so I broke it into two parts. This first part is going to really answer why I'm a prepper stacker and, and, and what a prepper stacker is. And the second half is going to be more about the specific silver and gold that I stack. Why I stack certain things and why I actually shun other things. This is going to be rather controversial. And, you know, I'm okay with that. You don't have to agree with Yankee. You don't have to stack the Yankee way. That is perfectly fine. Everybody has a way of doing it, right? And they're at some level no bad way to stack. But I think it's very important to have a strategy to understand why you're stacking and to follow it as best you can. Now, what I'm going to say right now is not a surprise to people who have been watching my channel. They know that I think there are three main types of stackers. There's the collector stacker, the flipper stacker, and the prepper stacker. You may have five, 16, 32 types of stackers that's fine. I like to boil it down to three because I'm getting old and I'll forget 15. So three. And you're probably a blend of those. I am. And I'll explain why. The first one is a collector stacker. Okay. That's the person that goes, Ooh, Oh, I just have to have it. It's so beautiful. That silver is luscious. That gold is shiny. Oh, bring it on a series. I got to get them all. Whoa, I'm going to get that slabbed. That's gorgeous in that case. I'm, I'm going to get coin capsules for everything. I'm going to keep them because they're gorgeous. They give me some sort of internal satisfaction. Now, if it sounds like I'm making fun of it, I'm sorry. Because 
I'm not primarily a collector stacker. I think it's wonderful. I think collecting things is awesome. And if it brings happiness and joy to your life, do it. That's awesome. That's the first type, a collector stacker. The second type is that flipper stacker. That's the kind that uh, buys something with an eye towards how am I going to sell it? And I've watched videos that say you shouldn't buy silver until you figure out how you're going to sell your silver or your gold. You should have that game plan in line. You, you should not know with your LCS of what, what they're going to buy. Premiums? Nah. You know what? doesn't matter if I could sell it for more. If it's going to appreciate in value. Shoot, this silver, this gold, it's an investment. It's going to make me money. Woo! Flipper stackers know when to buy, when to sell. They understand the, maybe the tax ramifications of selling, like, you know, if you, capital gains, capital loss, whatever. Flipper stackers, uh, you know, just want to know what's hot, right? Yeah, they think it's pretty. Yeah, they think maybe the economy may go south, but it doesn't really matter, okay? They may want any host of silver or gold as long as it will appreciate in value and then they can sell it for more money. And maybe they'll use that money to buy more silver, more gold. That's great, whatever. But it's about the flip. It's about buy low, sell high. Right? That's the flipper stacker. I'm not primarily either a collector stacker or a flipper stacker. So this is what I have for collector semi-numismatic type silver right here. Fits in this little pouch. This is the Yankee Constitutional Silver Series that I am holding on to for my son who doesn't know. Little stacks. I'm going to create a display. It's really pretty stuff. And it's taking a while to buy. I, I, I spend significant premium on some of this stuff. I've also had some great deals from people in the community. This is pretty much the extent of how I collect silver. I also um, do flip occasionally. I have a few coins that um, I bought relatively cheaply. I thought, wow, maybe this will flip, you know, international stacker. Uh, oh, just a whole bunch of people have given me advice on you want to buy this now, Yankee, and then turn around and sell it. Fine. Great. I'll flip it. The third type of stacker, and that is the prepper stacker. Now, a prepper stacker is mostly concerned about the weight of their stack. They want to stack the most efficient as they can. They don't like premiums. They don't care a whole heck of a lot about selling. Now, I know there's been a lot of videos out that say, before you buy, you got to figure out your exit strategy. How are you going to sell this stuff? For a prepper stacker, I'm, God willing, never, ever going to sell my silver or gold. Let that, let that sink in for a minute. That may, that, may, that may be hard for some people that are listening to swallow. They may think, Yankee, that's not true. Everybody has their price. Gold goes to 10000 Gold goes to 20000 That Yankee cannon is gone, dude. You are selling that thing. Mm -mm. Silver, come on. It's got to break 100 It may go to two, three, four hundred. Yankee, you're going to sell that silver. I knew you will. You'll sell it. No. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not. To me, what I see coming is going to be so massive, so globally impactful that it's going to be used, but it's not going to be sold. So if you've been watching uh, Yankee Stacking for any length of time, you know that I like macroeconomics. I actually watch macroeconomic YouTube videos to the utter dismay of Mrs. Yankee. She hears me listening to them everywhere, even in the shower. I know that's TMI, but the point is I really do like understanding where we are both fiscally and monetarily as a nation and globally. When I say, when I say fiscally, I mean how governments spend money, uh, the budget, our national debt, and when I talk about monetarily, I'm talking about how the Federal Reserve and Treasury play games with our money, uh, the backing of our money of, for, by gold and silver, um, you know, monetizing the debt, all that stuff. So both physically and monetarily, 
I believe we're going to suffer an immense reset in our economy. A complete and utter collapse, not just in the United States, but globally. I think a lot of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be completely disrupted. I think we're going to be more concerned about the heat that keeps us warm, the food that we eat, the water, the potable water that we drink, the protection that we're going to need for ourselves and our families, and at some basic level, how to barter, how to be able to survive with supplies. That is where I see this ending. I want to talk a little bit about the flow, the cycle, which I think we're going to go through. We've seen recessions, right? The first is recession. We've seen them, right? We've seen multiple recessions. A recession is when you see, you know, businesses struggling, maybe shutting down, uh, laying off people. Unemployment goes up. Consumer spending drops. The markets go way down, right? A recession is essentially the free market's attempt to bring uh, the economy back from excess spending. It is to right the wrongs, if you will, with the way we, uh, you know, increase debt. You know, recessions usually last, what, five, six, seven, eight years, somewhere in that vicinity, and then there's usually a major change. We're overdue for a recession. It's coming. Nobody, you don't have to be a prepper stacker to understand basic modern economic scenarios of boom and bust and understand that we are overdue. Now, I'm highly confident in a recession, but I can almost guarantee what the response to that recession is going to be. Our central bankers, uh, the Fed, the government, whatever party is in power at that time, they're never going to tell you that a recession is about to happen. Whether it was Ben Bernanke, the former Fed chairman, right before the um, uh, Great Recession, or our current Fed chairman, Powell, none of them are ever going to tell you that a recession is coming. Everything is fine. They do not foresee it. And, and when it comes, it's going to be a complete shock to everyone. They can't say it because if they say it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's a recession. Now, the next step is a crisis, okay? It's a massive loss in confidence. What happens? Banks fail. They shut down. Markets completely crash. Um, the uh, uh, exchange of goods and services start getting affected. Uh, banks aren't lending to each other. Uh, people are panicking. Yeah. That is a crisis. We had a crisis in 2008. And we came literally within hours of a complete shutdown of markets. It would have shut down the supply chain, the just-in-time supply chain. So your grocery store would have been empty within hours. ATMs would have been empty in hours. I was working at a bank and I remember the discussions that we had over what would happen if we had a run on the bank and how quickly we'd have to declare a bank holiday. I mean, really bad stuff was about to happen until the government came in and saved the day. Ben Bernanke and the rest of them were like, we got this under control. We're just going to do QE1, QE2, QE3, whatever it takes. We're going to save the markets, save the economy. That was a massive crisis. We've gone through a few of those. Those are big. But that is not why I'm a prepper stacker. I'm a prepper stacker because of the third scenario. Not a recession, not an economic crisis, but a collapse. So we've never seen it happen, not here in the United States, maybe Venezuela, Argentina. Yeah, they do it all the time, right? <laughs> Way back in the Weimar Republic in Germany, yeah. Okay, wheelbarrows full of cash, yeah, yeah, hyperinflation, all that. That's for banana republics. That's not for the United States, right? Yankee, well, you are out of your mind. We are the reserve currency of the world. Everybody wants to be us and to have the dollar. The dollar, it's, you know, so valuable. Everybody thinks we're the safe haven, or at least the cleanest shirt in the dirty hamper, right? No. 
We are the dirtiest shirt in that hamper. We are the most indebted. We have gone way overboard following the 2008 crisis. We're not in any way, shape, or form ready for, forget a crisis, a simple recession is going to spiral out of control. And it's starting to happen. And this, uh, this latest repo market injection that the uh, Fed has done, I think that is an indication that we have started the process of recession, crisis, and eventual collapse. We just got our third rate cut of 2019, and the Fed balance sheet also has bloated. They've taken on more debt, $250 billion in seven weeks. Guys, they're monetizing debt, expanding their balance sheet twice as fast as they did during the Great Recession. Twice as fast. And if that wasn't enough, the national debt just broke 23 trillion. But so what, right? 23 trillion, 24 trillion, 28 trillion, 280 trillion. It's just fuzzy money, right? Check this out. You know, when the numbers are this big, they're, they're just pretend. <laughs> there, there ain't no Scrooge McDuck vault. You're, uh, you ready to get red pilled? Money doesn't exist. <laughs> it's just a promise from a computer. You might as well say it costs Furchin Nanjillion over 12 a detan. You know, same difference. Guys, this is the perfect storm of stupidity when it comes to monetary and fiscal policy. It is insane. Do I really think that a collapse is going to happen? Yes, I do. And we're in no position for that first stage, that recession. We are gonna quickly go to a crisis, quickly. And the response again by the Fed is gonna push us, I believe, into a collapse. My next video, I'm gonna to explain to you why precious metals, gold and silver, is so critical for us. It's, again, it's not an investment for me as a prepper stacker, it's insurance. It's critical insurance. And I hope you can join me next time on Yankee Stacking. Thank you for watching. This has been a lot of fun. Get ready for part two. It's coming soon. And ooh, yes. I hope your day <laughs> is a-okay. <laughs>